Hey guys, this is Isaiah from Your Head Software. Today we're talking about Stax 4 and the five new features that we've put into it. This is feature number two, and it's all about the library. Now, normally I just show the feature hyper condensed as much as I can in these, in these videos, but I'm gonna take a little detour on this one, and we're gonna talk about the library in general. And the reason is I get a ton of questions about the library, and more often than not, the answer is, hey, that feature already exists, it's in the preferences. So today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about some of the preferences and options and other tweaks that you can do to customize the library. Um, and at the end of the video, uh, we're going to come full circle around into customization of library groups, which is where the new features are in Stacks 4. So the video isn't too long, um, but we do uh, cover a bit more than I do in some of the other videos. So let's check it out. All right, so I have uh, a whole document set up here, but we're hardly gonna look at that. We're really just gonna spend our time on the library here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand the library up a little bit and then I'm gonna do something that most users never know that you can do, which is expand the library groups. Now we can see that the library groups have uh, full titles and you can see what they all are. And this'll make the demo a little bit easier. Also, you can actually see one of the coolest tiny micro details that's in stacks. If you close this guy up, can notice that the plus button down here is centered right now. It's centered right in between these two lines. And if we expand it, then centered will be the wrong place for that plus button to be. So it scooches over just a tiny bit. I love that kind of detail. Okay, so we're going to expand the library groups uh, up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna open the preferences and we, we're gonna see what we can um, configure. So um, in Stacks 4, we've reorganized the preferences a little bit um, so that there's not too many in any one section. And now there's a whole library section. So you can see there are tons of options in the library section, and most of them are for uh, turning on and off certain portions of the user interface that you might not be interested in. Now, usually someone would do this, set it once and then forget it. So um, a lot of people don't know that these preferences even exist. So the first set of checkboxes here, they're just for showing or hiding um, which of the built-in library groups are displayed. So um, yeah, you can turn off pretty much everything. In fact, you can turn off everything. Now, um, don't do that right now, obviously. Uh, if you don't have any custom groups, that leaves the bar completely empty, which is, um, yeah, not really useful, actually. But uh, if you do have a number of custom groups, say you work all the time in Foundry or all the time in Foundation, those are popular uh, framework libraries, um, then you might set up a custom group for each of those and yeah, you could hide all the built-in groups. Most people will want to leave at least the main group though. The main group shows all of the stacks, but it also shows all of your partials and in stacks four, all of your externals and templates. And it also shows images that are come like pre-bundled with libraries or images that are on your page. So, um, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, you can turn off some of those things if you if you want to. So if we look at the bottom of our stacks library here, um, so you can see we have Foundry installed. Um, you can see I have a few externals and a partial here. Um, I can disable those by deselecting these. And the library redraws and we can see all those items are gone now. Or we can turn on maybe just one. 
now we have the partials back. All right, so um, that's some of the options for customizing the library groups. You can also customize how the window appears. I'm not going to go into that today. And just to get things back to sort of a, a somewhat normal state, I'm going to turn on a few more of the groups. We'll leave a few turned off. Right, so um, what are some other ways to customize things? Well, some things that you might not set and forget, some things that you might change more often are down here in the library gear menu. So if you click the gear menu, you can change things like the icon size. So if you have enough screen real estate and you show things small, sometimes you can get all of your stacks in uh, on the same window, which is pretty great. Um, medium's good choice. A lot of people leave it at that. And then uh, you can also choose to organize your stacks differently. Um, if you choose by title, that just puts everything by uh, alf alphabetically. Um, and I find that um, rarely to be useful. It's useful in a couple situations, um, but most people find that a little bit disorganized. Uh, a lot of people do, however, like to organize things by author. This puts all of your Elixir stacks in one place and all of your Joe Workman stacks in one place. But the default's pretty good too. Um, that lets things be organized usually in the way that their author intended them to be. So that puts all of your foundry stacks together and all of your foundation stacks together. And any of the other major stack bundles, um, they all go in one spot. And usually that tends to be pretty, uh, a pretty good organization. But if you want more organization than that, you can create custom groups. Now, I'll create a custom group right now. Um, I'm going to put all of the foundry stacks in a custom group. And we'll include all of these alloy stacks here because they go well with those foundry stacks. And I will right click and choose Add to Group, Create New Group. So this will take all the selected items and put them in a new group. And it puts the new group over here, gives it the untitled name. And in Stacks 4, we get a nice little pop-up to help configure our group. So this is where the new features are. So um, yeah, I'm going to call it Foundry. And now we can also configure the icon that we use. Um, you can pop up the list here and scroll through and find something you like. There's a lot of things in there. Um, you can also type and it'll autocomplete. So I like birthday cake. It's good for demos. Um, the standard macOS system colors are here, so we can choose a, a color. I'm going to leave it blue. Blue is good. Okay, so now we have our foundry stacks all in our nice group together. So when we want to look at everything, we can still look at that. But if we just want to look at our foundry stacks, those are here too. I'll put things back to their sort of default look here. Maybe even set it back to big size. Right. So that's a look at how to customize your library in Stacks 4. And the new features of the custom groups with new icons and new colors and a new pop-up to help you configure things all together. Right, so uh, that was feature number two. Feature number three is text editing, so make sure and check that out. There's lots of new features there in text editing. There's a whole new user interface. And also make sure and check out feature number five. That's all about externals. And that's the big new feature of Stacks 4, so definitely catch that one. Thanks for watching.